to introduce to you the Long March project. And five of the artists are here with us, and Lu Jie, the chief curator and initiator of um, Long March project. I thought we would begin by um, just asking Lu Jie to, um, to ask why, what, why did he choose this framework and the motivation to make the Long March project what it is today and how it began in 2002. Hello. Um, the original idea came out when I was doing my curatorial research and study in London. That was 1998. And thinking of the um, uh, curatorial practice emerged in China from mid-90s until the end 90s. A very interesting uh, new approaches. And uh, uh, for, my, for me, the starting point of thinking when I come back to China to do a project, I was thinking of uh, several levels of questions which I feel was very urgent, need to be addressed. The first thing was about the re representational politics, um, the, the issue of representing Chinese contemporary art in the global space. And I, I did have several um, quite important things I feel that need to be addressed, such as uh, the relations between art and society, art and politics. Chinese contemporary art is very usually uh, framed, represented is with very strong political exoticism, but the very thorough kind of engagements, re-questioning of the relationship between art and the, the cultural history and the general political uh, history is kind of absent in a way. So that's one issue. The other issue is um, uh, engaging with this um, relationship between individual and collective. That this uh, new contemporary art um, the very often presented as the avant-garde. Therefore, it's the contemporary but there is this uh, very serious rupture and dislocation, the conflicts and negotiation between tradition, modernity, and the so-called avant-garde as the social um, avant-garde, which is failed to translate their social engagement, their power, um, their inquiry, although it's friend, friend presented as artistic avant-garde. So there are many, many issues all connect and link together made me feel that maybe one thematic uh, show or one um, biennale will be difficult to deal with. Therefore, starting as a revisiting our history, such as revolution, why there was a revolution, how was it, and why stop, what, what is the, the, the connection between the current market economy, the, this new law march, and the old long march. What's the, the link of rupture, the dislocations, all this constant negotiation surrounding the idea of utopian ideal society and revolution is engaged throughout the history. And also the very critical issue of how um, the, the social, the, the, the subjectivity constructions process ongoing in China, in the cultural study world, in the, in the literary criticism world, in the artistic production relationship, all these issues kind of separated. So coming from uh, my own experience as a, a traveler in different space, different practice, different field, different domain, I feel there's this very urgent moment that to connect all the history, the present, the space, the site, and the body and the whole body of knowledge come out from 60 until today. It's blossoming and there is this very exciting moment that maybe China opened up the possibility as a battlefield to re-engage, to rearrange all this idea and objects and knowledge. So therefore, we started the long march by having two, three years preparation. Year 2002, we launched the project. So how long before 2002 did you uh, prepare? I know you worked with another artist, Chu Jie Jie. Um, and how did you connect with 
urban artists, non-urban artists, and each of these artists here today, there are five around this table, but obviously there are many others. Um, how did they get involved in the project? Um, actually, the Long March started um, the moment the, the concept appeared, 1999, and uh, until year 2002, we launched the project. Those years, so already the first part of Long March, when you're talking about the research itself as a journey. So uh, the first layer was the, um, there are 100 international intellectuals, uh, curators, and artists joining the, this research kind of process, contributing a lot of ideas and uh, recommendations and a lot of intellectual support. And um, the beginning of year 2002, I was very lucky to have uh, to find the Komure Chiu Zijie, who is leading a uh, very active artist and, and, and theorist and critic and curator as well, multi role. So uh, we, we were together. He joined Domach as co curator. And we, uh, in the three months before we, we launched, we actually departure from Beijing. In the three months preparation period, we had. Uh, send out many open calls, um, try to promote a project, and the entire hour actually responds uh, very passionately. So up until the September year 2002, we uh, stopped the project on the road at the site number 12. There were about 250 international and local Chinese artists joining the project. Maybe um, we can ask Hong Hao to comment on how, he, how his involvement with Long March project took place from the beginning. Hong Hong, I want to ask you how you involved in the Long March project. 做一个，就是像这个艺术家做一个阐述，就是做这个计划的方式，然后希望大家去参与，然后我就是属于比较热心的去参与这个活动。It was uh, in 2002 when Lu Jie was given a public speech on this project and invited artists to participate in it, and I was one of the enthusiastic artists at that moment. 当时这个最开始这个像一个动员会似的，就是让大家感觉呃都很激动。At that time, that speech to us was really a very exciting promotional speech, and that he made, and we were very excited about this project at that time. Did Hong Hao walk as well? 啊，他想问一下，您是不是走过了？ 真正是走过了这个长征路线。啊，我实际上没有去参与，就是这个真正的那个行走这个，呃，这个路线。但是我是做的另另一种方式，就是在这个北京的一个呃二手市场去淘，通过去淘呃淘金似的去用一年的时间
请教，想请您谈一谈您是怎么参与这个长征计划的，然后您是参与做了什么作品？啊，这个就是在零二年的，我记得是在三四月份左右，然后就像卢那个洪浩说的，卢杰做了一个艺术家的一个呃动员会啊，当当时大家听了这个计划都非常的兴奋，然后每个人都想以自己的方式。Uh, again, my experience was very similar to Hong Hao. It was after this speech um, that Lu Jie made in March or May in 2002, and we got very excited about this project, and we all want to, wanted to participate in the project in our own way. This project is very large, and it has many different methods. It is not in a fixed place. 就是美术馆或者是一个艺术空间里边，它是在一个就是有点我们开玩笑说，让艺术家下乡，走到这个，因为它长征的路线穿越很多省市，然后有各种的呃空间或者是呃不同的地理，它都会给艺术家就是带来一些一些冲动，呃一些刺激。It was an amazing project. It was very different from what we worked on before because it didn't, uh, it didn't happen in just one single space. It happened across different spaces and across different um, provinces and cities in China. And we thought that was a great source of inspiration and gave us a lot of ideas of how we want to implement our art ideas, artistic ideas.这个作品是分为两部分，一部分就是二零零二年，就是他们整个一个艺术家的一个长征队伍，呃，包括中外艺术家大约几十人吧，百八十人，然后呢，我我的零二年这部分的方式就是我来记录他们走历史的这个长征
呃，有一些区域，它的变化是非常大的。Well, the um the whole route, the the route of the journey was the same as um in 1934, 1935, when they did the long march, but the whole social context and economic context have changed greatly, and it was completely different from what I've imagined when I started the journey. 变化最大的，我觉得是在这种，从这种经济政治的这种变化，是不是非常大的？ The change, especially the changes in in economy and also society, are tremendous. Just one more question, Jinga. I just want to ask how um, you discussed your project with the people who you met along the way, especially when you were making your tattoos and uh, performances. Uh, 次上还做一些表演的你是怎么跟他们接洽哦是这样就是我是完全以个人的方式没有跟一些没有这种跟政府或者是这种有跟他们没关系就是我用个人的方式但是在在我经过的这些不同的地域的时候有当地的人是他们
，所以这样我们确定了两条路线，一条呢就是在党史上所记载的非常重要的这个会议的会场，呃，另外一条呢就是这个，嗯，在就是呃遍布城乡的这种呃民间的这个大礼堂。Um, because those public halls were very, very popular in the 1950s and have been used very widely by the Communist Party, so we had to start, if you want to photograph or document those public halls, we had to start from studying the history of the Communist Party. Um, so when we worked on this project, we had two lines of um, way, ways to um, do it, to complete it. One is to look at the history from reading the history of Communist Party to find out those sites, those meeting, important meeting sites uh, by the Communist Party, and also then to go to villages and visit the, the local public halls that were used by local people. Uh, 这两种被分成了这样的两种呃类型的礼堂，他们的命运是完全不同的。Although both types of public halls are the same same public halls, but um, but because they were used by different people and for different purposes, the fates were quite different. 呃，在党史上所记载的这些重要会址的礼堂，那么他们就是呃。他们的命运就是在呃、哦、这次展览 APT 展览上所看到的，我们把它叫红色会场的，是非常完好的保存或者复制原貌的这样的一一种呃他们的命运。And the public halls used by the Communist Party for important meeting sites were were the ones that we've presented in this APT. And as you could see from the photographs, they were preserved really well and as exactly as what they were before. And the public halls used by local people were quite different. The, most of them were ruined and were used, or some of them were used for completely different purposes. So, when Lu Jie's this Changjing plan, and then started to implement it, so we this part of the Green Hall Hall, this this path, is exactly is this one. And uh, we call this public halls used by important, used as important meeting sites by the Communist Party, um, the red meeting halls, um, red, red meeting sites. And when we heard of this long march project, we thought the first line of the way that we're going to work on those public halls were, were quite. Um, were close match to what um, what Luji proposed of this long march project, and the meeting sites we have chosen happen to be very important meeting sites along the journey of the long march as well. So, uh, 2002年的夏天, so we met in Beijing in the summer of 2002. <laughs> um, and then finally with Zhou Hu, maybe we can ask him how he conceived of Utopia Theatre in, in terms of Long March Project because it seems like um, quite an interesting juxtaposition given some of what you have been saying in terms of the motivation for beginning Long March. Uh, <咳>我想问一下您就是说您的那个乌托邦戏乌托邦剧场这个作品您怎么样把您这个作品跟长征计划联系在一起呢好像它跟其他的作品有比较是非常不同的那您是怎么把这把您的作品跟长征计划联系
uh, the way that I understand the Long March project is completely different. Uh, 长征, uh, 这个 词或者这个项目意识形态局限范围内的它应该是面对我们今天所面临的最现实的问题what I understand of the Long March um, is that it, it is revolutionary spirit in it. That's, I think that's the essence of Long March. And when the Long March started in 19, 1934, it, was, it happened at a time of political change. And that applies to um, the contemporary life as well. That kind of revolutionary spirit, and we need that revol revolutionary spirit to face the changes, the challenges we face today. Mm, to 假如找一个容易说的词的话，就是应该是一种态度和立场，呃，一种对现成的呃方式、体制的不认同和对新的那个还未成型的东西的一种就是一种理想。这个可能是更难做到的。It's an it's an attitude for me. It's an attitude and a position. It's an um, attitude towards um, status quo, what you think about the current situation, and also what you think about the changes. Uh, 更多的想一想，这个项目到底想要做什么？他们会面临怎样的问题？他们必须解决什么问题？他们在途中会产生什么新的问题？这个话是最有挑战性的。I started the long march or got involved in the long march project the same way as um, everybody else. Got very excited when we when we first heard of this project. But what I thought most was what's going to happen during the journey. What exactly what this project wants. And um, what sort of problems they're going to face, what sort of challenges they're going to face um, when they when they try to implement the project. Uh, I don't know if这次参加的作品叫乌托邦剧场,我是说的。他是我前面一个作品的一个变体,就是我第一次参加长征这个展览的时候有一个作品,也是一个用黏土做的动画叫乌托邦机器。and the Utopian theater that you saw, that uh, you've seen um, in this ATP, is an extension of a project that I did for the Long March project called Utopian Machine. It's also a claymation. It was also a claymation. Utopian Machine, this work is using clay to make a film. 是关于我们每天晚上要看的新闻联播的内容。那么我对这个新闻联播内容啊进行了一些选择，用呃粘土来模仿这个新闻联播，重新做一个一个二手的新闻联播。and in Utopian machine, I use clay models um, as the characters for the claymation, and I used news, uh, China news, that every Chinese person, uh, all Chinese people watch every night um, in CCTV, a central China um, television station. And I used these um, clay models to replay um, this news program. 
，同时把这个投录像作为一个投影，同时也展出，就是我拍摄这个动画的是这个粘土的场景的雕塑，就是同时来展出，就形成了就是一个第二现场和一个第三现场这样子，就是有多个新闻现场这样子。Um, I use different um, methods to display this artwork. I also use projections to project um, the, the clay models um, onto. Is that a screen? On the screen. On the screen. On the screen. On the screen. Yes. So what people see is both the screen and also this um, installation. So there were two types of sites that people can see. This time, I participated in the Wutubang Theater. I was trying to do some work on the original basics. 呃，变体的处理，呃，比如说原来是一种分体式的这种，就是呃观看这个新闻。现在我把它做成，就是在不同时间发生的呃新闻，不同地点发生的事件，同时把它聚聚中在一起，就是变成一个共识，呃，共同空间。我们再回头退出来看这一个，呃，我们自己制造的这个世界，就看这个剧场。And this time I made some alterations to um, to Utopian machine, and this time I've put different sides, different stories all together um, on the same table, and people can sort of um, to get out of this site and see the world that they have created. Thank you. Um, just before moving on, Luje, I just wanted to say, um, you know, there are other artists in Long March that are not here. And um, critically, um, three of them are artists that are not urban-based. They're from folk art. And maybe it would be interesting to hear your ideas about how artists like that participate in a contemporary art project. Um, just very often, we will understand the historical long march, 1934 and 36, as kind of military uh, event or, or, or historical uh, themes always connect with, it, with ideology and, and war. But uh, our new law march understood, understand the, the, the metaphor law march as a cultural transmission, translation, as a, as, a, as a site and platform and forum, multi-layer kind of construction that the urban, the country, the, the, country, the traditional, the modern, the theory, the practice, the international, local can transform, translate, transmit it one to another. So this kind of engagement process, this kind of um, uh, reorganizing the relationship, uh, turn the things upside inside out, is our idea of the long march. So therefore, from the very beginning, we build uh, the, the structure with a certain site, certain layers, engaging with traditional ink paintings issue, with um, the issue of public and private, um, anonymous, anonymous arts, uh, so-called folk art. We question the, the status quo of contemporary art in a very broad range of how the naming of contemporary arts kind of take away many people's rights, manifest their own aesthetic value or political valuation as the contemporary as well. So um, Master Li Tianbing, mm -hmm. who's who archives here, and um, um, uh, Mr. Uh, Wang Wang Hai, the sculptor, who made uh, thousands of uh, sculptors um, of Mao Zedong, who self-taught sculptor as well, and also Liu Jiechen, uh, who, did, who does this paper cut, uh, the story of Long March. So those are um, the, the presentation here present another level of long march engagement with certain very critical issues. But apart from that, the long march actually has site devoted to gender feminism. There's a site specially engaged with curatorial roles. And there was the first um, curatorial summit happened in China, International Curatorial Symposium, built as one site for long march. And there was a site um, mostly engaged with public art, and there was one site specially devoted to the sound installation and the new media art, where actually Yang Zhengzhong also participates. Mm -hmm. So um, we try to work with every artist, every working artist, uh, Chai Guo Jiang Xu being uh, the international Chinese artist, local Chinese artist, folk artist, and international artists as well. 
there were about 40 international artists participating in the project. So when you, um, I mean, this very ambitious project, obviously, um, there must be things that don't work. Um, that's the most beautiful part of the long march, that um, uh, we contradict ourselves all the time. By being very passionate, idealistic, romantic, at the main time, very organized, um, uh, physically challenging ourselves, but at the main time, in return, challenging all this conventional notion of what's the authenticity of history and what is this, um, our understanding of the future, the past, the present, connecting with body politics. There are many, many issues linked together, all at the end of the day, ultimately connect with the conflict between theory and practice, the idea, the ideal, and the reality, and how contradictional all this utopian uh, theater or mission itself, or Hong Hao's mm. engagement with one site, mm. the antiquity market in Beijing. He spent entire one year going there. By him being there, the entire antique market people's retracing the long march history. Everybody you know, clean up the, the, the archive and contribute something to him. Mm -hmm. And so, but his, his later one is working with all the fake antiquities representing mm -hmm. long march history. Mm -hmm. So there's this constant negotiation, like uh, uh, Chinga's work, the first part in the year 2002 was he stayed in Beijing and monitoring us through the telephone conversation with the participating artist who's actually on the road, mm -hmm. connecting with his memory, this collective consciousness, this long march ed education we all inherited when we were a child. So all gathered together the energy on his body. But then year 2005, when we already start the project on the, on the road and come back, dealing with the urban space as a long march space and the global space as a long march space, he himself went to the road, and we are witnessing and watching, imagining his roads, his journey along on the road. So this is a very different layer, different way of working with Long March that um, ultimately all come together to the complication of the idea of journey, where you start, where you arrive. Is the arrival actually the departure point? How the conditional uh, element actually is is the the surplus the the, the charge the, the things you lost and the things that you gain throughout this entire journey so to end my answer the reason we stop at site 12 not realize the entire project in four months people said this is a career suicide if you stop the project <laughs> but uh, when you when you stop it's because it's a destiny you stop that uh, you suddenly realize if you have to achieve certain thing with a certain way, certain day, certain level, then there is this careerist kind of uh, um, uh, one thing to be perfect, not realistically embracing the challenge and the contradiction of our human being and our understanding of knowledge and connection with body and time and history and the sight. So therefore, to stop it, to admit that we are a very serious, problematic project <laughs> and carry on reveal through our daily practice, um, global and local, mm. to reveal the contradiction, the, 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 the problems. And we especially enjoy the, the understanding of failure in the term of um, how sincere engagement with the the collective consciousness will ultimately result in the much higher kind of expression of individualism, which I guess my last sentence is also contradictional. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so how do you envisage sustaining this project, you know, in, into say next year or the future? How does it manifest? Um, after year 2002, um, we actually had several major presentations in global space in, the, uh, in European museums. And later on, year 2004, we, we participate in several museum shows as well uh, as a project. But we also 
were able to move ahead by creating the Long March Global Project called the Long March Chinatown, which is extension of the, the metaphor of Long March, not just totally connect with political utopia, the idea, uh, the ideological things, which was a spa, the foundation and the departure point, but we arrived at the Chinatown Project, um, which is more size specific to think about the boundary, the, the notion of identity and the construction of this whole thing surrounding uh, cultural agency when it's migrated mm -hmm. and how you retranslate your share when you from far away from, from being dislocated. So this is the idea that we developed since the year 2004 until today. Um, at the meantime, we are trying to negotiate on the three uh, parallel paths. The long March space in Beijing is nowadays functioning as one of the major um, art production, presentation, curating um, space. Multifunction, we have residency, educational, publicational roles, but we have uh, group shows, uh, solo shows, um, all the time ongoing, very uh, dynamic kind of energy guaranteed surrounding Long March. Um, but apart from that, we constantly go back on the road. We extend the Long March route to be everywhere, instead the historical route which symbolized the, the communist journey. So we just recently completed a coal mine project. We went down with one artist 800 meters down to the coal mine, engaging with socialist memory, the trans transformation, um, looking at the site between urban and the agricultural society, which is coal mine, as the third space in between. So we, we work a lot with folk artists, with public artists on the road. At the meantime, we carry on develop project in the international space. So there are so many issues is urgently need to be addressed. And once you, you hit one side, it's similar like a historical law march. It's all interconnected. Therefore, I presume the project would be develop indefinitely because there wouldn't be a moment we satisfy with ourselves. And there wouldn't be a moment the audience or the public or the artists will be satisfied with the project. So we'll carry on developing. So there are still many artists in China who are still very interested to participate. And there are many artists who hate Long March. <laughs> yeah. Very true. Very so true. Um, in terms of that kind of tension, are there spaces then, given that Long March is so open, um, is there a, a debate that takes place about that within? There is always debate. Actually, this project started with a debate in London. Uh, my Italian classmates say I'm a revisionist, which in China in 50s, 60s, very dangerous term. My father was a revisionist. And today, uh, there are people address me as a counter revolutionist. And I, uh, two months ago, somebody said to American museum uh, director that Lu Jie is a Stalinist. So all this confusion of the long march itself is a new long march itself. Going around, you know, um, I, I think um, we always very much focus on the discourse making, making space. We always um, create a site uh, having this very serious debate. So therefore, an artist, like a long march artist, we are not a collective. Mm. We are a curatorial project. Every artist participate in Long March, they are all very well established independent artists. So therefore, this critical distance is very important. Like last night, I had a wonderful conversation with Yang Fudong about the very serious problem of Long March from year 2002 until today. So that, you know, is very good kind of challenge that on one hand, the curatorial project is a service-based kind of platform. <coughs> Try to contextualize the relationship between history and the, the site today mm -hmm. and the global and local. Try to engage with the elite, the avant-garde, and the public. But at the meantime, problemize our practice. It's kind of like a recharging kind of energy kind of providing process. Return back to artist community as well. What, um, what kind of participation do non-Chinese artists have with the project? And how did that come about? Uh, 
Um, there, there are historical materials which is very important, like Godard La Chinois, made in the 60s, Antoniani Junguo China, made in the 70s. These are very important materials made when the time China was blocked away you know, from the entire world, only connect with a certain you know, socialist country. The cultural exchange is only in this two-way kind of traffic, but uh, very few moments that say in Europe or United States, North America, you get to see, you know, international artists work and visual material about China. So those materials are forgotten today. And presenting this material to public, at the meantime to our artists, is very important kind of visual display. This creating a very important connection of this ongoing uh, anxiety of Chinese subjectivity connecting with the conflict between modernity and the so-called multi multiple modernity we are negotiating today and the tradition. So therefore this imagination of China itself is problematic, but we have to do it. And this imagination of the Western imagination of China Today, you see from the Biennales, you see the museum shows, you see the market response to Chinese art. It's all connected with this cultural production process. Therefore, Long March itself is not only a curatorial project, it's, it's itself is a producer. And the international artists' involvement is always very, very important to form this relationship of what is international and what is local. Lots of materials we present, such as Godard, Antonioni, and also the, uh, the contemporary artists who contribute to the Long March are very important in the way of making the Long March itself not a Chinese thing, not an alternative presenting Chinese art in the global space replacing a, 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 a national pavilion, but a very sens sensitive kind of moment that you can examine relationship of this international and local. Okay, I've been reminded that I have to open the floor to questions because we have 10 minutes. Um, I think there's a roving mic. Tim? I have a question about the Utopia Theatre Project. The large model that looks as though it's made of earth looks very much like a model in the Shanghai Urban Planning Centre in People's Square that looks as though it's made of gold. Is there any connection between those two models? <laughs> Shanghai Part of this act, uh, part of the um, um, architecture in it is the Shanghai People's um, Palace is, is part 同时, of it. 同时来自于纽约, Shanghai, Beijing, and also the research from uh, Yang'an, from, uh, from New York, from Beijing as well. Something as large as this, um, that is the Long March project, can't happen without finance. Could you say something about how it's being paid for? Um, the research, preparation and research period from 98 until 2002, including the four journeys I went through before the departure, uh, on the field and the global travels research 
was all financed by myself. Um, from um, year 2002, when we had uh, 250 projects realized on the road, um, the bills paid by myself, my family, with very kind support of my family and myself. Um, from we, since we came back year 2002, September, until year 2004, most the fundings again from myself until we are totally broke. <laughs> so um, from 2004, there was two public fundings from the, uh, international foundations, but only for the educational part. There were two projects, research and survey, connect with Fogart. Um, from year 2005 until today, uh, as the project grow bigger and bigger, uh, we begin to realize that um, the question of an interesting organic uh, project and connection with institutionalization, that there are so many projects you want to do and you, you, you are only 10% on the way, you need to be sustainable. And also in China, there are quite a lot of um, uh, artist org organization space is very much looking at our, us as an example that how the question of sustainability is, you know, is very critical and urgent. So we begin to realize that without any public support in China, as we all know that there's no public funding, and there's no law yet to support a non-profit organization. So therefore, the Long March start a small branch of art service consulting um, the commercial aspect as part of the whole Long March project. So with very kind of support of uh, participating artists, um, we are able to do the service through negotiated invisible um, capital, such as we helping artists to realize their project and do their career management and even help them to uh, take care of their publications or documentary film. We do a lot of service in order to generate a certain financial kind of support, uh, such as the bookstore and uh, lots of kind of consultancy and service. And from last year, we are very lucky that um, some of the major pieces of Long March, after so many years, become very visible in the international uh, global art museums and collectors' eyes. So therefore, we are able to sell some works, therefore generate the, the, the funding to support the project to carry on. Um, there are uh, the situations are all, all different. Like um, we just, in May, we did an um, educational forum we, the Long March Initiative look at the problem, very serious problem of art education system in China. And we work with artist Chai Guo Chiang, who based in New York, a leading Chinese artist. So it was about 150,000 US dollar for the whole project. But Chai is very kind to give two work to Long March and to sell to collector and generate funding to support the education initiative. Taiwan in Ali see the top in Beijing in Beijing. Tinida Burjin Burjinida the print shop. Uh, it's a uh, photo lab in Beijing. Yeah. 
understand there was um, another reconstruction of the Long March that happened during the Cultural Revolution, and I'm just wondering if any trace of that has entered your project. Um, I was trying to look up your dates of birth, and I, I guess um, it's not your generation. Um, and it seems like there's this kind of generational fascination with the recreation. Could um, you speak about that, please? Um, the, our Long March is totally not a reenaction uh, of the historical Long March, um, as I explained before. So, uh, but however, we do look at the aspect of uh, journey, uh, pilgrimage, um, like uh, Xiao Yinong and Mu Chen's work, looking at the ritual space, such as auditoriums. There are hundreds of projects all engaging with this, uh, the, the notion of you know, where we belong to what is an important moment in the history during the journey. And there's, uh, the site number two was connect with uh, the, the ritual space and, and pilgrimage and journey. And it's also connecting with a lot of uh, um, travel writings. And there's one side deal with Shangri-La, uh, with the, 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 the notion, the idea of the paradise. Um, so all these projects is is maneuvering in the in, in a totally a uh, new cultural uh, dimensions instead of the record um, connection, uh, you know, searching the the root of revolution by paying this uh, you know homage to the historical moment. So there is a connection which. Um, we make this long march, uh, the Red Guard uh, journey, and also the constant ongoing project. There's a, uh, we, we never announced ourselves as the first artist long march. Actually, there were, I, I guess, at least hundreds or thousands of uh, artistic long march projects happened throughout the history. There could be um, uh, artist associations long march, it could be workers' unions, artists' clubs long march. Um, there's this year's uh, 70 years anniversary, mm -hmm. and there are a uh, hundred different long march journeys. However, ours is very, very different. Um, I think we do need to close the panel now because we have a screening happening at 7 o'clock in this theatre of Abhichat Pong, the Thai filmmaker. So I would like to extend a thank you to all the artists and to Liu Jie and to Delia, our translator, and to all of you for coming on a Sunday evening to spend a wonderful hour with us. Thank you. Thank you.